Okay. Let me see if I can zoom in on this. You guys see that? When the valve dropped, it spewed oil out through the intake and the filter and it got it down on the man's bumper. Before we even start tear down, I'm uh, hand washing the front and the back of the car just to get all the oil contamination off of the paint. We, uh, we have to wait for a week or more to get the engine and we, uh, we really don't want the paint to be stained or hurt from the oil saturation, but just look at how much oil this thing spewed all over the place. The back bumper was disgusting, but can you guys see that? Behind me is a beautiful C6 Corvette. This uh, 2008 Z06 came with uh, a 427 cubic inch LS7 engine. This was a great motor, but they had a big problem, right? They, uh, they came with hollow valves to help them achieve this 7,000 RPM red line, and they're known for dropping valves. You'll just be riding along and the head of the exhaust valve would just drop right off into the cylinder. And that is exactly what happened to this car. Uh, the owner was on the highway just holding a steady cruising speed and the unthinkable happened. We're going to tear this apart today and see how bad that damage looks. Uh, there's a crack in the engine block that stretches from the cylinder head all the way down to the oil pan. Uh, let's get it apart and see what this destruction looks like. Okay, here we are. We've got the, uh, at this point we've got the hood off of the car. We've got uh, the tin up off the car. We've got the valve covers and the foils up and the intake is up. We've got our uh, engine lift plate bolted down. And, uh, valve cover. and uh, behind me is the AC machine going that's currently uh, replaying the R134A out of the system. We pulled out a couple of spark plugs. This is from cylinder five. This is a good spark plug. Let's see if it'll focus. Good spark plug. And this is the spark plug out of cylinder one. This spark plug is uh, done. Uh, I, 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 it, it came out very tight and probably damaged the threads and the head coming out as well. The spark plug is done. Uh, we're just finishing up reclaiming fluids before we uh, drop the subframe. There's a couple of different ways that you can get an engine out of a, a C6 Corvette. Uh, we like to take them out from the top, especially with the manual transmission cars because, uh, well, because we don't have to disturb the clutch hydraulics. If you take it apart from the back and underneath, when you pull out the torque tube, you have to separate the clutch hydraulic line between the master and the slave. And this uh, can very much, even though it's a quick connect and it's meant not to, this can introduce air into the system. And if you just pull the motor forward off the clutch, then you don't have that problem. You don't disturb the clutch hydraulics at all. They stay uh, holding together. And that's, uh, that's what we're going to try to work for. Uh, there's something else on this car that we saw that I want to talk about briefly. Anybody that knows me knows how bad, how much I'm against catch cans as a whole. And this car had one. Uh, there are oil separators that the factory might use, which have a drain on the bottom that leads back to the oil pan. And this can help keep oil away from uh, the intake or whatever. But the catch cans are just a reservoir to hold the oil. And they're directly attached to the intake vacuum. This one, I don't know how well you guys can see it, but this one was full to the brim, okay? All the way up, like there's oil on the bottom right here on the tip of it. Once this gets full, if it's not maintained and drained, the engine under high vacuum will just start drawing straight oil right into the intake. And, you know, like water, you can hydrolock your motor off of oil. I just don't see any good cause or reason for an oil catch can. I think if you have blow by, you need to rebuild. I think uh, the amount of oil vapor that will make its way into the intake through the PCV system 
is light enough that most of these, any of these engines are known for going hundreds of thousands of miles. And they're not known for catalyst failures from oil. They're not known for fouling out spark plugs from oil. The oil fouled spark plugs that we see more times than not are actually from uh, worn valve stem seals. So I'm just against those because if they're not properly maintained, they can become a danger and they can cause failures uh, for something that that's not really a problem to begin with that is uh, in people's minds because they don't like the look of the wet floor inside of the intake. Uh, and for that, you know, GM did a great job of designing the LS engine and the intake manifold, having the plenum on the bottom and having all the runners come up over the top. You know what I mean? That level of that layer of oil on the bottom of the intake, people should see that and be happy with the fact that that's oil that didn't make its way into the engine to be burned. And uh, whatever they do, oil separators can be okay because oil separators don't, don't just remove oil from the engine. We should never try to remove oil from the engine. That's just weird. And so uh, I just can't get over this feeling, even after uh, all these years as a mechanic, I just can't help feeling like the oil catch cans are just a uh, just a marketing ploy for people to sell the product that uh, is a solution in search of a problem, basically. Back to the teardown. Okay, here we have about as much teardown as what we need to have up top to get the motor out. This really is the uh, minimum mandatory if you're going to pull the motor from the top. Uh, we have the radiator and the condenser and the fans pulled out as an assembly. Uh, we got a bunch of hoses out. We got all of our electrical undone. We've taken the time to remove the headers. They, uh, they come out pretty easy on this car or these specific headers came out pretty easy anyway. We've undone the AC hoses and left them attached to the compressor and from here we could leave the power steering pump connected to the accessories and just leave all the accessories in place just disconnect the power steering feed hose and return hose and then drop the subframe and slide the engine forward up and out and remove the engine just like you see it uh, for me i'm uh i'm a bit of a paranoid mechanic and i like uh unloading my uh my cherry picker as much as I can. So I'll probably remove the power steering pump. I'll remove the main bracket. I'll remove the water pump and also the AC compressor. And I'll just pull it out as just a long block assembly with the uh, clutch and flywheel attached to the end. And we still also have to uh, break down the suspension on both sides up front so that we can drop the subframe down and give us the clearance we need for the steering rack. So uh, the motor will clear it. There's a line that goes right up and comes off of the center of the steering rack. We also might uh, undo this one line from the center of the steering rack and just push it out of the way just to give us a little bit of extra clearance so we don't have to drop the subframe all the way down to the floor and just give us a little bit of extra room. But, um, but this is the minimum mandatory. If you were just looking to get the engine out as fast as you can, you can leave all the accessories attached and just pull it out like that. And as you see, there is plenty of room in front of the motor for it to slide forward the distance of the uh, input shaft on the torque tube. And there's plenty of room for it to come up and out if we wanted to do it that way. All right, back to it. Okay, here we are out of the car. Uh, before I set down on a cherry picker, you can see the damage. He said he was driving along and he just lost all of his oil pressure. And I guess so, it blew out a chunk of block meat right at the oil gallery, right where it runs from the front to the back. Look at that, destroyed, destroyed, cracked from up here all the way down. And uh, we see something inside. That's just terrible. Anyway, we're uh, gonna get this on the stand. Tear it down. See what. See what. Uh, see what happened. Get the pan off. Get the heads off. See if the cam is any good. Okay. I don't know how well this is showing it, but uh, the way that we knew that this motor needed our drop the valve, the way we were sure it wasn't a, uh, it wasn't just a rod thrown through the block, 
is if we look at all of the rocker arms and all the valve stems, they're all pretty much on plane. Some are up, some are down. But this one, cylinder one exhaust, is up a lot higher than any other one on this bank. This rocker is pushed, urged way up, and this valve stem is a little bit higher than what it should be. So we understand the head dropped off the valve, and uh, there's the money shot. Can you see I see it? No valve, just the stem. You see right down into the cylinder. Cylinder one exhaust. It always seems to be an exhaust valve that drops on these LS7s. Alright, let's get the heads off. is the good head. This, this is the bad head. So, this is the cylinder. You guys can see that destruction. And, uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Let me reposition the camera, I'll show you guys the damage. Look at that. That is really bad. That is definitely not going back together. No matter what you do. There is no piston. Well, we still need to see if we can get the camshaft out and if the camshaft is going to be usable or not. That is... Atrocious. Sometimes when they drop the valve, the piston and the head just bash each other to death. In this case, something lodged in a very bad way and it blew out the side of the block and uh, chunks of the sleeve and the piston is done. The connecting rod is done. I don't even see if the connecting rod is in there. There's a piece of piston. Oh, there's a con rod. Whoa, the whole sleeve is... Ho, ho, ho! <laughs> Look at that! The whole sleeve just come right out. Go right in. That's as bad as you want to be. My gosh. Well, we still got to get the timing cover off and see if the cam is all right. The valve train so far looks to be okay. It'd really be nice if we can save the camshaft because uh, our customer really wants to try to reuse that in the new motor he's getting. 
from here, we're, uh, we still gotta tear the oil pan off, get the front rear covers off, get the camshaft out, and make sure the cam and lifters are okay. We suspect they will be. Uh, all of this destruction is on uh, the crank, the rods, the pistons, and the block, and the heads, head. Uh, which is good. The customer's gonna get a good low mile used uh, LS7 engine, and we will probably change the valve, the exhaust valves, before it uh, goes in his car, along with putting in the cam, and uh, also he's got trunnions that we'll, we'll, we'll swap over, his uh, rockers are fine. Uh, I did some tuning work on this car when, I, when he first got it, and uh, we actually thought that the valves were already done because it had ARP head bolts, and uh, even to look underneath the valve covers, you really would have thought that, that the valves were already swapped because he's got trunnions, he's got uh, he's got much stronger springs and uh, and a hot cam. You, you would have thought that somebody would have already done this service. Uh, sometimes when this happens, when that valve drops, it can destroy the engine, and the LS7 is an expensive engine to buy. So uh, if you are riding around with an LS7 and you haven't changed your valves, it would be a good idea to swap in some solid exhaust valves. And, uh, there's a lot of different makes of them that you can buy. There's a lot of, uh, that run a very large price gate range. You can buy uh, solid exhaust valves pretty cheap. You can spend a lot of money on them. But uh, it really feels like those hollow stem valves are just a, uh, a ticking time bomb for LS7 for what should otherwise be a very good motor. We, uh, we got good numbers out of this on the dyno, and it was doing great. And that was a while ago, like, what's that, a year or more ago? It's been a while that he's been driving this, and everything's been fine. And uh, he wasn't even really running it or racing or doing anything bad with it. He was just out uh, driving home one day, and he was just holding a steady cruising speed on the highway, and out of nowhere, just boom, there it goes. And uh, this, uh, this puts him in, into a very bad place. This is a... Uh, not even just to buy another LS7, but to buy another LS7 and then to go and send it out for the head work before it goes in. That's a, that's a really nice how do you do if you're not uh, just prepared for it. So let that be a lesson to all you C6Z06 guys out there. Get rid of your hollow exhaust valves while you can.